how do you sign to your dream label? I know you want to do it. I know there's a few labels you want to get on. Maybe you're self-releasing. Maybe you're working your way up. But today I'm going to show you what is the process, the methodology, the strategy of getting there. Now our students have done it. They've successfully gotten to their dream label. And you can take the same methods that they've used and apply them to your career. There might be some hard truths, some things I say that you don't like, some tough love, and you can disagree with me. That's okay. I'm just going to talk about what's worked for our students. If you don't know me, my name is Justin, and I run a program called Cosmic Academy. It's an artist development program. We've been around for over 10 years, and we taught over uh, 500 producers at this point. And they signed to all the big labels, you know, Spin In and Juna, Tool Room. They play the biggest shows, EDC, Ultra. They play in Ibiza. And we only care about results. So, so let's dive in. I think that there's a misunderstanding about signing to these big labels. And I think that comes from some of the very, very successful people that you look at. The, the best example of this is Martin Garrix, right? So Martin Garrix, he signs his first big record. It signs on Spin and Music. And the next year, he's playing the main stage of Ultra. Aside from Martin Garrix, that never happens, okay? You look at all the other artists that have come out of this space, of other spaces, and typically you're not just going to sign one record and then the following year be on the biggest stage at the biggest festival. Nor will you typically get to the largest label right out of the gate. You know, that is what we call an outlier. Okay, so an outlier does not represent the whole of the averages of all the other people doing what you're trying to do. So to look at Martin Garrix or some of these hyper successful people that got that one song, that's not how it typically works. All right. If you look at almost any other career, almost any other person in this space, they start like a lot of other industries where you start at very, very low level label. You prove it there. You work your way up, you work your way up, you work your way up, you work your way up. And I think in music, we wish it weren't that way, right? We wish it weren't like the, the, the real jobs or the corporate jobs or the nine to fives where you start out as an intern and you work your way up to a, to a, to a part-time position and then a full-time position and then an associate and then a vice president and a president and a CEO. You know, we'd rather just look at an example like, I don't know, LeBron James, Right out of high school, he's in the NBA. Kobe Bryant, right out of high school, he's in the NBA. But those are two people. You know, again, you look at not the outliers, but kind of everyone else that has had to do it the, the normal way. You start out on freshman basketball, junior varsity, varsity, D1, community college, working your way up G League, and then you're playing in the NBA. Right? So, so music is no different. And I used a word before that I think is very important. Prove. You have to prove in what you're trying to do. There's a quote from a movie that I love, Training Day, Denzel Washington. I don't know if you've, if you've seen it, but Denzel says, it's, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove, okay? So part of this, part of you getting to your dream label is proving it, okay? So let's say your dream label is Tool Room or Anjuna or Spinner, whatever it may be. How can you prove that you are ready for that position, that you're ready for that contract? Well, you're probably not going to be able to prove it by just self-releasing or throwing up songs on SoundCloud. That doesn't really prove much. And again, this might be something that's hard truth. You're going to hate me for saying it, but by you self-releasing, all you're saying is that you know the song is good. You haven't had to convince a label or a company to accept it. You've said, no, this song is good enough to be out there for the public. And there's an inherent problem with that. I don't make music. I'm not a music producer. In Cosmic, we have incredible production teachers, and, and they've done incredible things. I teach the branding side, the signing records side, the, the playing show side. I don't make music, but th there's nothing stopping me, a person with no background in production, for making a song that's atrocious, it's, it's me farting in the microphone and putting it up, self-released, next to your song. And that's a problem, okay? And, and it doesn't prove much to the labels that you eventually want to get on. Or in another topic we'll eventually discuss, it doesn't prove much to someone like me who's, who's a talent buyer and puts on concerts, right? In, in, in an analogy to think about, 
imagine if there are two people applying for the same job, okay? And one person comes in for the interview and they say, uh, oh, well, I've, I've got all this experience and I, and I know I'm really good. And, and the person at the company, he goes, how do you know you're really good? And the person interviewing says, well, well, I've started my own website. It's called johnsmith.com and I'm John Smith and I'm the president of johnsmith.com and I, I started my own company. It's John Smith LLC and John Smith this and, and all this. That proves nothing. That proves that you just want to start a website and you think you're good enough to have a website, right? Let's say the next candidate comes in. Next person comes in to interview for that, for that job and they say, well, uh, I've been working at Google or I've been interning at Nike or I've had a job at Apple. That proves something. It proves something because that's very, very difficult to do. So it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. And what those larger labels are looking for is proof that when they take a chance on you, when they risk giving you a contract, giving you an advance, putting resources behind you, that there's some proof that that investment is going to pan out. So the strategy that my students use very, very successfully to get on their dream labels is they start and prove it on a very, very small label. And they do very, very well there and they work their way up and they work their way up and they work their way up. And I'm going to use three examples right now to kind of showcase this. Three of our amazing students that have gotten incredible results. Nostalgics, Bexy, and Charles D. So Nostalgics, Bexy, and Charles D, they've all been in my program and over the past few years have had incredible results. Nostalgic signs to her dream labels. Now she's on Dim Mac and Night Base and, and Bexy's is on, she's on all the labels she wanted to be in. She's on Tool Room and Thrive and Anjuna. And Charles D, his, his goal, his dream when he joined our program was getting signed by Eric Prids and that happened. And he's gone on tour with Eric Prids. He puts out music on Eric, Eric Prids's label. So how did they do it? Let's take a look at their catalog, at the actual route, the actual journey of getting to those labels, okay? Okay, so here we have one of our students, Nostalgics. Um, she joined our program about four years ago, uh, 2018, and she's had incredible results, and this is her discography. These are all the songs that she has had over the last few years that have been signed and put on labels. And it's very tempting to start up here. These are the most re recent releases she has. Um, it's tempting to start here and say, okay, she's on Deadbeat, she's on Thrive, she's on Night Bass, she's on Confess, she's on Dim Mac. And these are some of the biggest labels in Bass House, if you like Bass House. And she's doing these, these incredible, incredible collabs with Bijou and Dr. Fresh and you know, AC Slater, all these, all these people that she looks up to. You know, this, is, this is a dream for her. But this is not where you start, and this is not where she started. I think, again, th this is where that problem comes in, where people are looking at artists they, they want to be like, and they say, oh, I want to be on that label, they're on that label, but we fail to look at how did they get there, where did they start, right? You know, with the exception of a Martin Garrix, they all started with very small labels working their way up. And for those of you that, uh, that play shows, you know that's the truth that shows, right? You know, in the comments below, you know, tell me, feel me on this, right? Uh, you know, you don't start playing ultra. You start playing in empty rooms to nobody, some shithole little venues, right? Um, so let's go back and let's see the method that she took. Before we do, though, this is so, 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 so important. If you've been watching this whole time, I really appreciate it. Do me a favor and smash that like button. Like just hammer the shit out of that like button. You know, we're putting a lot of these new videos out from our program for free, and we're just trying to educate and help as many people as we can. You know, we've been doing this for over 10 years. We've helped a lot of people, but we want to see some results from y'all as well. Hit that like button. Help us, you know, get this pushed out into the algorithm. And if you haven't, hit that subscribe. Um, so let's go and see how Nostalgia's got here, right? Because this is where she wanted to be. If we scroll down to the very, very beginning, so 2018, August. This is her first record that she signed. This was finishing our boot camp. She was in our, our boot camp. She joined our boot camp, you know, early summer. So maybe uh, June, July of that year, she got out. She started implementing the teachings. 
she signed her first record. Now, I don't know what label this is, and maybe they're great, I don't know, but they're not a big label, all right? She didn't come out the gate and just start pitching Dimac, right? You know, and I think that's also a problem that people have. They, they want to pitch the big labels immediately. And that, going back to the analogy we said before, that's like you trying to get into the NBA just starting out freshman year of high school, or you trying to get a job as the CEO when you haven't done an internship yet. So no, we have to start out and prove it on a smaller label. So that's what she did. She got her first record on the smaller label. And a lot of times, going back to the proving thing, they're not going to do much for you. And I get that. And that's okay because they're going to assume that you're not going to do much for them. So you're going to bust your ass. And that's what she did. She worked very, very, very hard. And I believe that this song went either top 10 or even number one in Future House. It was on the small label. And she was the one that did the marketing. She was the one that, that, that worked very, very hard. And it did very, very well. Okay. And then what you're able to do is go to the next label and say, hey, look at what I just did with this small label. Imagine what I can do with a label slightly bigger like yours. And then she got signed to the second label. And then this next label. And then she has three tracks. And if we look at the pacing here, she's had three songs in four months. So we want to be signing a lot of music. Okay. If you're only signing one song a year, this is this is not going to work. You have to be signing a lot of music. And then she goes to DND. This is a smaller label that Bijou runs. And she says, okay, look at what I've been able to do. Four months, three labels, working my way up. And she now gets on his label. Okay. And what's very smart about that is Bijou is a respected artist. He has his own label. Is it spinning? No. Is it musical freedom or Armada? No. But He's a respected artist. The other thing is that Bijou does sign to some of the bigger labels. So, so this is very, very important. If you can start thinking like this, you can get similar results where if you can sign to an artist's label, or as we say in Cosmic, a camp run label, and if that artist signs to some even bigger labels, those bigger labels might look and say, ooh, we respect Bijou. We, we, we take his music. We know that he's good. And he... Is willing to sign her and that's what happens here right she then jumps up to ghetto ghetto it's a label based out of dc and then we have confession confession is chami's label mala's on this label very big label and again they look at the resume how many songs has she signed has she been growing on the labels has she been proving it yes and to uprise and another confession and then about a year in to sign your records you know, she's got this resume of, let's say, 9, 10 songs in 12 months, bigger and bigger and bigger. Night Base to her, I know, is always a dream. AC Slater, you know, someone she really respects, then signs, you know, this is, this is an EP with Night Base. And then continue on. And now she gets to Dim Mac. This is about, you know, two years in, a year and a half into signing records. And after a certain point, now she's having, she's having a blast. You know, she'll give one to Night Bay, she'll give one to Confession, she'll give one to DND again. Um, she'll try some new ones. This is Thrive. Thrive is doing incredible work right now. UK have Deadbeats, Dead's Dead's label. This is Universal Music. So this is where she is now. And again, it's very tempting to just start there and say, I'm just going to start pitching Confession. I'm going to start pitching Night Bay. I'm going to start pitching Dim Mac or Spinner or whatever. Prove it at the, 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 the smaller labels first. Work your way up. Let's take a look at someone else. And now we're looking at Charles D. Charles D took our program about four years ago. He joined Cosmic Academy. Again, he's had phenomenal results. Um, his dream, his goal was being signed by Eric Pritz. That was always a dream of his, and that's exactly what him and I worked on. You know, we sat there and we said, what is the roadmap? How do we get there? Well, you're not just going to fall out of bed and Eric Pritz is going to find you. So very similarly to Nostalgics, you work your way up. And again, we should not look at where he is right now. This is 2022 Factory 93, one of the, the biggest techno progressive labels out there. That's owned by Insomniac. They're gigantic. Um, there's the Eric Pritz label. Here's some more Eric Pritz music he's done. But we have to scroll all the way back. Look at how much scrolling this is. This is just four years. But you go back, and this was his first record signed after finishing our, our, our boot camp. 
It's 2018. So this is almost exactly four years ago. He signed his first record. Okay, first, first, first record. You know, this is not a big label. You know, maybe this is something you've never heard of. That's okay. What did he do? He proved it. He proved it on the label. He busted his buns. He he got on you know the the charts. He he went to I believe number one in Progressive House. He did quite well with getting artist support and all those great things. And it was his hustling. And then he was able again to go to a slightly bigger label and a slightly bigger label and slightly bigger label and building that resume, little by little by little by little by little. And then you fast forward. You know we're scrolling quite a bit here, so. You know, we're at two years in, so two and a half, almost three years later, he gets the first track to Eric Pritz, okay? Remember, you're not pitching that dream label immediately. You have to build the resume. And there's going to be absolutely no difference when we look at Bexy. So let's very quickly look at Bexy. So these are Bexy signings. These are the, the, the records and, the, and the, the record labels that have signed her. And we're starting at when she finished our boot camp and she signed her first record. Here you go, 2019. So, you know, two and a half, three years ago, she signed her first record at a boot camp. Again, a label that is not called Two Room or not called Anjuna or not one of these ma major labels. This is a small label. And the point is she had to prove it. She had to convince a label that her stuff is good enough. And then she's going to, you know, crush it on her own. And she did. So she puts out this first record, does very, very well. She's the one doing the marketing. She's the one doing the branding. You know, you're not going to get a label out the gate to just bet on you. You have to show them that you're willing to do the work. And then she works her way up and she works her way up. And then she gets in Tommy Sunshine's label. This is Brooklyn Fire. Okay. So she had about one, two, you know, it's about seven songs, seven signings in, you know, many months. It's good pacing to get to Tommy Sunshine and then working her way up and working her way up. And these songs are doing better and better and better. And she's putting a lot of work into it. I mean, this song right here, Feel the Energy, look this up on Spotify. This has over 7 million streams on Spotify, okay? And she's little by little by little by little. And then she gets on Thrive. You know, Thrive's one of the, the, the really big house labels out there right now. And she's still doing stuff on Brooklyn Fire. She's still doing stuff on some of these other ones. And, and then eventually she gets on Anjuna. And Juna is one of the biggest labels in dance music. That's Above and Beyond's label. They have Anjuna and Juna Deep. And now she's doing major deals with Anjuna. She's doing shows with Above and Beyond. She's playing their label parties. She's getting on Tool Room here. But again, now we're two, three years in of her proving it. Okay? So this is the same thing across the board. All of our students that have results, all their discographies look like this. And by the way... If you look at a large artist, they're mostly going to look the same. So I hope that that was helpful. And uh, I know that there's different ways of doing this. And you might have your own methods and have heard other people talking about it. But this is how our students do it. And we know it works because we have the data from you know, 530 different producers and different artists. But you can check out other people you know, in, the, in, in the music scene and EDM. I think a really interesting case study is actually Don Diablo. You know, Don Diablo didn't come on my radar as a talent buyer, as someone who books concerts till I'd probably say about 2011, 2012, 2013. And then you saw him go from, you know, a midliner on a side stage to a headliner on a main stage. And it almost seemed like it happened like out of nowhere. But no, no, no. I challenge you, you know, go on his beat port. You'll be blown away how long this person has been signing records and little by little by little by little. You know, I think it goes all the way back to like 2002, 2000. He'd been signing records for over 10 years. And there's, there's a saying, overnight success takes 10 years. And I mean, I showed, showed you some of our students that they've gotten to some of their dream places in two, three, four years, but it's going to take time. And... While I hope and I pray and I think it would be amazing if you just sent one record to spin in and the next year you're on the main stage of Ultra and they're just, you know, pushing you like that, assume that that's not going to happen. Okay, that is an outlier. And I think it's better to, you know, go with the strategy that we know works for essentially all the other people. And it's working your way up, proving it little by little by little by little. Okay, so I hope that this is giving you some insight into how we do it and how our students get some results. 
And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time.